Let's start the exploration of our transition properties with duration. The first thing that we need to do is set up our state machine. So just like in the last video, we have a state that sets our rectangle in the left position and another state that sets our rectangle in the right position. Instead of complex animations, we're keeping it simple with a single key. Now let's go back to the state machine and actually configure our states. Now we already had the left state, so we need to click and drag the right state out on the graph and then create the transition. So remember, just mouse over the state you wanna leave from and click and drag that little ellipse over to the state you wanna to go to. If we play the state machine, you'll see that it snaps to the right position. Now we're gonna use duration to change up that uh, property just a little bit. So again, duration actually controls how long it takes for the transition to occur. So right now we're on zero milliseconds, which means that it jumps instantly from one state to the next. But if we extend this time out, you can see that it will change that uh, motion. Now let's say, for example, we select this and set a value of 500 milliseconds into this duration. You can see how differently that looks from what we had before. Instead of snapping, it smoothly transitions from one side to the next. Now what's happening is that we're interpolating between the starting position and the ending position over 500 milliseconds. Now we can change this time up and say shorten it. So instead of 500, let's go to 100 milliseconds and see the difference. You can see how much faster that is. Now, if we want it to be longer, we can go and add 1,000 milliseconds if we want. And this is going to take one full second to get from the left to the right. Now, if you remember, we actually have this interpolation panel down at the bottom of the properties. Now, by default, it's set to linear, but we can always change it up to cubic. Now, this will give us that ease in and ease out motion that we would expect. But we could also go in and customize it to give it different results, like um, making the ease in and ease out even more extreme. In a lot of ways, these transitions are like animations. We're going from the ending property to the starting property of the next animation. Now we can always create another transition. So let's say for example, we wanna go back from the right position to the left position. It'd be like we're creating a looping animation. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make another transition and then go in and grab this transition here and change the duration from zero to a thousand milliseconds. And we're also gonna add the cubic interpolation to this. So now what we have is a looping animation essentially where we're gonna move from the left side of the artboard to the right, and then from the right back to the left. And this is just gonna happen over and over and over again. Now we're never gonna reach that threshold of too many iterations like we did when our state machine was set to zero because that was just firing way too quick that our state machine couldn't keep up. And we can do this with more complex timelines. In this case, we're just gonna use slightly more complex timelines that have two keys on them and one rotates our rectangle in a clockwise uh, direction and the other in a counterclockwise direction. Now we're using the same setup in our state machine. And what's gonna happen here is that one of the timelines is gonna play. We're gonna transition to the other one. It'll play and then we'll transition back. So let's see the result. As you can see, we're getting one rotation right and then a rotation back and then a rotation right and then a rotation back. 